pull the uh, pump head off and the copper plate and then you can see all this black freaking gunk built up right where all the flow would come through and it's just completely blocked. This is more than likely why it wasn't working but more to the point though is I don't know what all this black sludge is. And here is the little silicone insert that was in there. It's filthy. And I mean, it appears as if there was like the liquid got too hot or something, but I never even had <laughs> the CPUs get hot. I don't know if it's because the water getting stagnant caused the water to heat up and do so, or do something weird or the coolant, I should say, because it's. And then you got more of the. You can see the sediment down there and the liquid. I don't even know if this stuff was supposed to be clear. But it looks it looks about like watered down soda or tea at this point. I've emailed um, Silverstone because a pump shouldn't be doing this after you know three or four months, and I had this on a Pentium two, which was mildly overclocked. I didn't even have a lot of voltage going through it, so you really shouldn't have gotten this kind of gunk buildup from that CPU. I noticed, come on, I'll focus, that my computer started getting warmer and warmer and warmer week after week, and uh, I tried remounting it, moving around, the pump still turns on, but it just wasn't getting water flow. That's the simple truth of it. Look at the build up here. Water just couldn't simply flow through there, so I don't know if that slowly caused uh, a heating issue on that and then it separated, or if there's something literally internally breaking apart, or if the hoses are decaying somehow and this is like rubber buildup. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Anyways, I think I'm gonna get it cleaned off and, uh, and we'll see what happens. Okay, I filtered the liquid here. But I'm still not gonna trust this stuff. Cause I don't even know if it should be this color. And I cleaned the pump out. So the little silicon thing was dirtier. I cleaned that out. I did manage to pull this all apart. Um, don't know why I didn't bother to record that, but I had to kind of figure it out. Basically, there's these four screws you got to take, and plus there's these uh, little teeny ones there that sit in a groove that hold the um, tubes in place and they're just basically pushed in there with a rubber gasket and the screws prevent them from going in there and then of course you have to take the um, mounting brackets off because they screw right into the block and then there's also the drain tube um, or the drain uh, plug that has to come out as well and once all that was out I was able to flush some water through the tubing here and get more of the gunk out that was on there and of course you guys saw what the copper plate had looked like it had all that black junk in front of it before now I cleaned it off as best I could so when I go to try to refill this thing that's going to be the fun part because I'm basically just going to have to let gravity do the work and try to fill because the water will flow down through here into the tubes but instead of using that fluid which is basically just radiator fluid anyway I'm actually going to use 
some actual car antifreeze because it's already 50 50 mixed because I don't have water on hand um, the distilled water I don't have any of that on hand and this stuff should in theory work and it doesn't really matter because this is a review sample that I reviewed and it's not covered under warranty anyway although I haven't checked my email today to see if Silverstone replied because I did inquire about this to see if they even wanted the unit back just for their own study purposes to see why the unit failed and why it got all that gunk in there seeing any more air coming up through and I have been agitating the radiator moving it back and forth getting air bubbles out as you can see the cup here I filled that cup about half full and uh, yeah, I'm trying to shoot this one-handed sorry but yeah it, it took quite a bit of the coolant in there so I'm assuming at this point that uh, it looks pretty much about the same amount that came out that was back in there. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and seal it. And uh, yeah, I'll give it a go. I'll plug the pump in on my computer and then uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. So at this point, I've gotten four of the screws back in. And. Um, Yeah, I did get a little bit of liquid squeezing out around the, the copper plate. I don't know if you'll be able to see any. Yeah, there's a little bit right there. Um, but uh, I think that's okay. Hopefully that means I got most of the air squeezed out of this thing. And that it's, you know, sealed tight. Hopefully, there is a, a big old air pocket sitting there. I did agitate the unit quite a bit, and then I wasn't getting any more air bubbles out. And it just had that bit of coolant floating there right in the, the motor cavity. So, yeah. We'll, we'll have to see how, how it goes. I'm going to finish putting the other screws on, and uh, I'll get it hooked up, hooked up to the computer, and get some... Uh, Get the pump turned on and see what happens. Okay, I plugged it in and ran it. I forgot to film that part, but I'm going to run it again anyways because it was just basically moving liquid around. I let it go for about 15 seconds. It still sounded like there was quite a bit of air. As you see now that the liquids moved through, you don't see the liquid floating up at the top. So yeah, I need to fill more in here sorry about the shaky video I'm doing this with my camera on my phone that uh, doesn't have image stabilization so anyways let's get this puppy filled back up again and see what happens okay as you can see I have our cooler installed yeah Ignore the wires dangling, I didn't bother to hook them up. I got some uh, napkins there to hopefully catch any leaks. I already ran it um, through an extensive leak test all night last night and it didn't leak. But now that it's actually connected and um, under heat and stress, you never know, it could still form a leak, but it seems to be pretty good so far after the after the uh, stress test. It's just not running as cool as I'd like it to. It should be running cooler than it actually is, so yeah, not sure what to do about that.
Okay, I've had my processor under load for 15 minutes plus now. Uh, it's been stabilized for about the last five. It only took about 10 minutes to get to full temp. Uh, it's hovering around 46C to 47C on the CPU. The cores are reading 51C, but with it being a Phenom 2, who knows how accurate the core temps are anyway. So for this purpose, we're just going to use the CPU temp as our guide. This is with a Cooler Master D92 uh, air cooler in a push-pull configuration. And uh, once um, the test is done uh, to see if there's any leaks, I'm gonna let that run for many hours to see if the uh, Tundra TDO2 Slim ends up leaking or not. And then we'll go from there. Um, I'll get that installed and then we'll see what happens with the temps. I have the uh, water cooler installed and uh, the temps aren't, uh, aren't nearly as impressive as they should be. It is cooler than the D92. Uh, it's it peaks at about 41, but hovers around 40 or so, although the fans are quite a bit louder in the top of the case. Um, part of that is from vibration. I think I just need to find some uh, rubber washers to put in there, and that would help dampen the noise quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, but anyways, it's going on... Uh, Almost 15 minutes here and staying stable. All right, one last thing I wanted to show you guys before I end this video is that I reoriented the cooler. Um, this is about three or four days later. I tidied up the wires a little bit, but uh, I'm not too picky about that kind of stuff, uh, especially with this motherboard. Um, it's not exactly the, the most beast of things anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, with the reorientation, the tubes blocked the innermost, uh, dim slots, so I had to move the RAM sticks. My motherboard doesn't seem to care which, uh, dim slots are populated, the A channel or B channel, uh, so long as that you have, um, those channels both populated or, I mean, you can just have one stick in there, but... It'll run either way. It doesn't care. Um, yeah, temps are pretty stable uh, in this configuration, I think, because the hose isn't quite as tight. As you can see, there's a lot more droop to it than when I had it the other way. Um, there is room on my Thermaltake case. I don't know if you can see this up at the top here, but the... Uh, Tracking for connecting coolers and stuff up there is absolutely amazing. There's so many different ways you can orient coolers and stuff. So I may try to reverse this whole thing around and have this end over here so I can move the hoses over to this side again. That way I won't have any blockage on the dim slots. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end the video, guys. Uh, this is my first upload to this channel, so it's brand new. Uh, so I'd appreciate some likes and subscriptions. Uh, if you didn't like it, let me know in the comments below. Give it a dislike. And yeah, hopefully I'll have uh, some new content uh, within the next few days. Until then, see you guys later.